All right, WordPress as a CMS. This is going to be an open discussion. Um, there have been a lot, quite a few questions. A lot of people have had interest in this topic from the meetup.com uh, voting system. Um, what we have here, have the next slide. All right, we have a panel of uh, experts. Uh, we have Brian. 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 Oh. <laughs> I, I, I did this out the book. Sorry, sorry, Brian. Sorry. Um, we have James. Uh, we have Brian. Uh, Jim and Jared and um, the, our moderator tonight is James Mitchell who suggested this idea of how do you make a website more like or how do you make your site more like a website uh, rather than a yeah. stereotypical blog which is kind of post and send off the way out. So I'm going to leave this up there and uh, turn it over to James. Send it over to James. Great. So I'll try to speak loudly and uh, then we'll keep the microphone for the um, uh, panelists who are have the answers. I just have the questions, so I have the easy part. So I'm James Mitchell. I have a company that publishes legal websites. We do a lead generation for attorneys. Uh, my partner Keith McKay is here. Keith, just uh, wave your hand. And I got interested in this stuff about three years ago. Uh, a graphic designer I know in New York showed me yeah. WordPress, showed me the plugins. I said, this is incredible. I mean, think of the amount of time that it saves doing this. And I kind of fell in love like in five minutes. Um, just, I had a couple comments before we started. One is, in terms of upgrading to 3.0, I would urge people not to do it unless you really have a compelling reason to do so. I'm sure most of you have seen what's called the technology adoption life cycle, where kind of, you know, there's a curve and various people adopt at various points in the technology. So the early adopters, people like Kurt, you are know, kind of waiting at the Apple store the day, you know, the first <laughs> product, you know, kind of, you know. And, and that's good, but you know, the problem is those people have arrows on their back. And so if there's some feature you absolutely have to have under 3.0, then maybe it might take, uh, might be worth the risk. If your site has any kind of traffic at all, I'd buy a, a separate domain name just for testing. Te you know, just imp you know, uh, do a backup, export it all to the test domain, try all the plugins, all that stuff, and really see if it works. If you're going to do it on a, a real system, I mean, you're going to have some problems. And the real problems are going to be in the plugin area because that's what WordPress does not control. WordPress does a pretty good job of quality, you know, QA in, 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 with their own code base. But there's a billion plugins out there, there's frankly too many of them, and not many of them have the QA uh, process that, um, that one would like. At the WordCamp, one of the, the, the women who was from WordPress told us that there's kind of like an informal list now of that WordPress keeps of the most popular plugins, and they actually now are formally testing those plugins as part of their internal QA process. So if you're talking about, you know, all-in-one SEO, or, you know, some plugin that like everyone's using, your odds are pretty good that that will work because even if the author of that plugin isn't keeping up, they'll make sure that I mean, even if they have to adopt WordPress to accommodate it. Um, the second is, I know, um, I think Jim mentioned about WordPress org and downloading uh, you know, the WordPress software and installing yourself. That's for people like Jim and Kurt. I mean, most people should not do that. They should have a hosting company that has a script like Fantastico. You press the button, two minutes later, it's done for you. I mean, you, you really, the default installation is going to work 99% of the time. You know, it's only if you've got a very peculiar need or you can need to customize it and you save yourself a lot of hassle. Apache and Linux are not fun things to play with if you are to do work. Um, so on those notes, we're going to start with some questions for the panelists. And I'll just let any one of them that wants to answer do it. So first of all, what is a CMS? What, what is a content management system? Why do we care? I hear about it all the time. What, what does it do for us? A content management system just makes it, from my point of view, makes it easy to manage your content. If you have, Drupal will give you the approval process, which I don't see right now in WordPress, and somebody may know the plugin or a way to do that, but that's what the big companies are looking for, the newspapers. One person writes it, another person edits it, another one approves it, and another one publishes it. So in the, at the WordPress level, it's really about managing your content and making it available quickly and easily. As for the um, editing process, I know CoPress, a company, um, they made Editflow, one of their guys, which basically does what um, Drupal does, and it, it starts out at the author level, and then an editor has to approve it, and you can define your own roles. So I work for a newspaper, so if you're looking to do that, you can definitely use Editflow. 
Now, does everyone have a copy of the handout, by the way? Yeah. Okay, so I'll let, um, and there's some extra over there. Most of this handout does not deal with the talk. It's simply a stuff that I found useful over the last three years. Uh, Jim commented on the fact that actually how much uh, uh, was, was in there that didn't relate to the talk. Uh, three, four, and five, and two. Uh, so uh, in three, for example, we uh, actually I copied the Wikipedia definition of CMS. It's a typical academic Wikipedia. I mean, I'm not sure people would ever say that. Um, there are some useful links in four and five. Um, uh, the the um, number seven, that's the WordCamp itself. That was last January. It'll be sometime next year, 2011. I can't recommend that enough. It was an amazing experience. It's also sold out really quickly. So, I mean, literally, you know, I mean, the first one they sold out in a month. Because it sold out the last time, people would even be faster to, to sell. It would be kind of like a negative cycle. So you really want to sign up for that fast. And then for those that want an electronic version of this uh, handout, um, you can look at 19, and that's the URLs for it. So um, I'll let the group pass around the handout. So how is WordPress a CMS, and how is it not a CMS? So I guess I'll jump back to the last question again. This, uh, a CMS is a CMS is a very vague concept. Um, it's basically anything that lets you manage content, thus content management. Um, so you know, a little text box that dumps some content on our website is a content management system. Um, WordPress, you know, WordPress has its roots very distinctly in a blog system. Um, you know, page, you know, originally you had posts and posts were linear and there was that concept. But there's very little difference between that and a non-linear tree structure. Um, the one thing being static links, and a potential other thing being that you have both dates in the URL and dates stuck on it. But in a good website, you probably have that anyway. Um, so it, it really, it really pretty much by my loose definition of CMS is a CMS in every way, shape, and form. Um, the one thing it's missing is, you know, the formal features that, you know, Drupal would, would claim they have, you know, for approval process and whatnot, but again, there are plugins that give you pretty much anything. Um, so CMS at its core, I think, is really oriented towards customized customization, and given the plugin architecture and the number of plugins that exist for WordPress, I think that it embodies that pretty well. So how would the panel describe the differences between a blog? I mean, we kind of know what a blog is, we know what a, a normal, quote unquote, normal website is. But in your opinion, what are kind of the main differentiators, particularly from a content point of view and from a design point of view? For our clients, we've chosen three different models, uh, depending on how comfortable they are with a blog and at what year they sort of got jumped in. Um, years ago, people were very confused by blogs. So the three formats, one is your blog posts, your most recent blog post is on the home page and that is the home page. The other format is a typical website built in WordPress. There are no, there is no blog, and your homepage is your homepage. And then the alternative is a hybrid, where maybe the top half would be sort of your typical homepage content, and then the bottom half is your typical blog content with your most recent posts listed down the page. So those are sort of three options that we typically find customers are comfortable with at some point. Also, just the difference between the blog and the CMS part is CMS uh, or a blog usually is very dynamic, whereas um, the home page of a company's website really most of the text is static, and then you probably have a featured content box or something that'll scroll through the latest products, and then maybe like the hybrid where you have a, a list of the recent blog posts and you click that and it'll take you to the blog. But from the the sites I've worked with, usually it's um, the home page. The text is usually about blah, blah, blah. Everything stays the same. And then they just want um, an area that they can update that will have the latest dynamic changes. And then the blog, which is the most updating. That makes sense. And and really, nowadays, uh, it's it's such an incredible you know mix of things, just because I, I would attribute a lot of it to Google. Um, Google likes changing content. so. Can you really think of any web page that is static? You know, you go to its home page and it doesn't have the latest news, which is technically a blog, or you know, some content or showing my tweets and, and whatnot. Um, so really, I, I'd say everything nowadays has some blogging component to it, just because again, I attribute a lot of it to Google and people like updated content gives them a reason to come back. I just wanted to add that when I talk to people 
when they tell me that they're looking for a CMS, they might not use that, that term necessarily, but what they're saying is that they want the ability to go in and kind of fine tune and tweak all these different pieces. And WordPress lets you do that if you get under the hood, if you have some coding experience, you can dive into the theme and, and play around with code and get it to look pretty much however you want it, it to, but a true, a true CMS, kind of like a, well, a social CMS, can agree on a definition is, is basically giving anybody the ability to kind of log in into like a back end control panel and, and tweak these things easily. And so when I see WordPress adding things like the draggable navigational menus, and I think that that's heading in the right direction. And there's another theme called Headway, which I'm, I've always wanted to try. I'm excited about it. I'm trying to find anyone that's used it that wants to give a presentation on it at the next WordPress meetup. Um, but it's great. I and mean, you can drag and drop boxes around and, and really customize your pages and then move things around. and they built that on top of WordPress, so I'm hoping that WordPress notices that like they've done with uh, the, the WooThemes uh, component and adds that in. The question probably is relevant, but would you characterize HubSpot for software as like a CMS system on steroids? How would you do that to that too? Does anyone use that software? I haven't used it, but I've talked to a lot of people that have. And Unless they've rebuilt it, it was built on .NET Nuke, so you're putting your content on their platform, and it, it is a content management system with a bunch of integrated tools to help you understand the source of the traffic and, and what of your campaigns are working well and so forth. So yes, that's a short answer. Yeah, from what I've experienced with it, which isn't much, it's basically like um, like uh, Google Analytics or something like that, and which I consider to be a really uh, really big CMS, so it's sort of the, basically the same thing like Alexa or anything like that that, tra that uh, tracks traffic. Just one note on, on updating is that um, obviously from SEO, updating is important. Google likes fresh content. The last thing they want is a stale site that hasn't had an update in the last year. They, that will quickly move you, out, you know, to page uh, 494. Uh, it's very useful to get a plugin that can then create a sitemap. A sitemap is simply an XML representation of all your pages. In theory, the search engines are smart enough to figure out all your internal links and figure out this page, links to that page, and so on. But the sitemap does the work for them. And a plugin, I use one called Google XML Sitemaps. It's uh, listed on uh, in, the, in the handout. And basically, it creates the sitemaps for you and then sends it to the search engines on your behalf. And so if you're changing your content three times a week and three times a week, you're then pinging Google and uh, Yahoo and uh, Bing as to your changed content, they'll come crawl you. That makes it look like you're you know, constantly having fresh content. Uh, the one thing that it doesn't do, it doesn't do Yahoo until you get um, a Yahoo with, uh, ID. ID uh, Yahoo requires an ID to um, basically ping it to say come crawl my site and I don't know what's going to happen with the uh, Yahoo Bing merger how that will affect things um, that's maybe something a topic that we can talk about at some point okay so um, I thought it would be useful um, to actually show some sites that are in WordPress is this working it is working but I, I said it to extend the screen because your resolution it doesn't let us set this to a resolution that matches that so okay. you'll have to drag step over to the screen is like this option side. I'm going to pretend I understood that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I do right or left? While he's fussing with the electronics over there. Um, so going back to, we, we just mentioned that Google likes fresh change in content. Um, I try not to get into an SEO discussion, but I work at the company that's arguably the top in the world for, for SEO. Uh, if anyone's ever heard of TripAdvisor, if you're looking for a job, talk to me afterwards. Um, shameless plug. So um, Google actually just announced probably less than a month ago that they're officially starting to account for speed of page load in their results, uh, in their ranking algorithm. Um, anyone in the industry has probably assumed that they've been doing this for a while, uh, but now they officially announced it and have some tools that show you how fast your page loads. Um, that makes it more important than ever to have a, a high quality host uh, and have a fast loading page because that will directly influence your ranking. Um, to, that, to that end, WordPress has a lot of 
parts to it. Uh, so if you're looking to improve your page load, um, look at something uh, WP Supercache. Uh, WP Supercache is a plugin you may want to look at, which generates static pages, um, so that when they get hit by Google or, or someone else, they load much faster. Um, that's becoming an increasingly more important thing as Google has the, the ability to make people improve the internet. Okay, so these are some sites that I kind of found that I thought looked pretty good. I think on the screen they don't look good at all. Uh, so rather than consuming our time on that, I'll just refer you to the handout, um, which has on uh, example five, um, these were some links that I found that basically showcases of sites that do not look like blogs, they look like normal sites. And these are obviously very good work, and this is like, you know, Top of the line stuff, but it might be better to just the screen that doesn't really do a fair representation. So, what tips can you give us? I mean, I'm not sure we want to actually do an actual demo, but what tips can you give us to configure or, or change WordPress to make it look like a normal site? What aspects of a blog should be included in a normal site? What aspects should not? Well, sorry, yes, uh, that's. A bit of an open-ended question. Sure. It depends entirely on on the goals for your site. You know, if your goal is to make is you know make money quickly and easily, then well, you're in the wrong place. Because I don't think if any of us could do that, we wouldn't be bothered being on panel. But um, <laughs> <laughs> we would come out of panel club for you. Um, anyway, so yeah, it really depends. I think more important than figuring out you know whether how how much you want to look like content and how much you want to look like a blog is really. I think the usability of the site is very important. Um, as someone who's going to be looking at your website every, each and every day, you're going to become intimately familiar with it. It's going to look very straightforward to you. You're going to know how to get everywhere. Um, and this is this is a, a big problem with designers and developers that they see this so much they, they lose perspective. Um, when you're looking at you know changing the layout of your site and putting in different widgets and trying different things, have other people look at it. Um, you know, go to have friends look at it, go into a bar and buy people a drink to look at your website. Uh, that's actually a very common usability tactic. Um, just go into a bar, take your laptop, hopefully no one spills beer on it, buy people a drink and, and have them look and just find out what they find easy to use, what's hard to use, um, before you go, you know, trying this experimental layout with, you know, all these nested menus. And it's really, you, you have to accept that you're gonna lose perspective and having a third party say, whoa, I can't figure out how to get to this page. Um, is, a, is a very useful thing, more so than you know saying, well, you need to be this content oriented or, or this you know chronologically oriented and whatnot. The easiest way in WordPress to um, just change the layout of your site right out of the box is if you go to one of the settings pages and you go to the second drop down uh, where it says front page and blog, and the front page you can choose a page to be your front page, and then the second option you can choose a page specifically to display your blog posts, and that's without even um, moving off the default theme. But if, like with Woo themes, and I know Press 75, there are other sites out there that create CMS specific themes without having to change those two options, and that just display changes the display on all the content on your site. And then building off um, usability. One of the things we do with our newspaper is we will go up to a random student and say, um, go to the contact form for us, or go to the police blotter, and you just watch them, and you know they should be able to go to news, down the police blotter, or news, campus. And if they can't, um, you know, well, what can we do better so that you can find this on this site, or and such and such, and that's usually a good way. Because if they can't do it within a few seconds or start moving the mouse, you know, you need to rework your menus and other things. One thing that Brian mentioned about, it, it depends on what, what you're trying to do. We, we touched on this in a few other meetups. Um, WordPress, fundamentally, from a purely technology <coughs> perspective, WordPress can do anything. It, I mean, you can make WordPress do whatever you want it to do. You have to look at, kind of, it, is it the right tool for the job? Sometimes it's not. If, you're, if you want to sell products, if you want to launch an e-commerce site, it can do it. There are plugins, they're, they're great. But is it really meant to be an e-commerce website? I, who knows? Um, Probably not. So I think it depends on what kind of site you're trying to build. Uh, WordPress sites, when, when you see them, you can kind of tell it's a WordPress site. They look very newsy. They look very blog oriented. Um, when you're, I think I just think it's important to realize that when you're trying to stray too far away from that, you should think about if WordPress is the right tool for you. Sure. Yeah, 
at that gentleman there. Yeah. I'm wondering if anybody knows of what the lar some of the larger WordPress sites are and more robust tech. TechCrunch is a good example of one. National. National. TechCrunch. Um, does National use WordPress.com? Oh, okay. So, yeah. so Mashable uses their own WordPress installation on their own servers. Which one is that? Um, Mashable. 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 Uh, TechCrunch.com actually use Word, uses WordPress.com. Uh, um, they there is some super de duper enterprise level support where you have your you have all these extra features that TechCrunch uses, and that gives them a, a lot of leeway to do ridiculous things. But they look like blogs. Yes. You know, look at the WordPress.com slash showcase. They got Nikon, they got the Los Angeles Marathon, all these different sites. And you'll find a, a whole variety of sites that are major name brands. Yeah, the easiest thing to do is start with the right theme. In other words, there are a lot of, of theme showcases. You know, WordPress is the, the one you start with, and some themes look like blogs, and some themes look like normal sites. Start with a theme that looks like a normal site, and then start customizing from there. There's a theme for everything. I mean, there's like probably what ten thousand themes out there. I mean, that you can download. Ninety-nine percent of them are free. Just going off what he said, um, I'm in the magazine newspaper industry at my school, so we are specifically looking for themes that are to display newspaper magazine layouts. So when you are looking for a theme, you want to make sure you're not looking at a blog theme or a newspaper theme, or um, you want to look for like a traditional website theme, which they do have if you do uh, search around. So that's just something to keep in mind. If you need a theme that's going to do what you want your company and your site to do, and it reflects on that. There's also like the highly customizable themes, like pieces and library. You have a lot of control that's free. Yeah. Yeah. So what questions do we have for the group? <laughs> Does anyone on the panel work with Studio Press Yeah, yes. Before he was called Studio Press. He was, um, Before he was called Studio Press, I forget what his... Um, Ryan Gardner. Yeah, I've used a few. We use, um, for one newspaper site, we used one of his magazine themes, but um, I haven't used any of his latest themes. I've switched to Press 75. <laughs> What's the name of the studio Press. Press. Studio Press is the uh, the company. He makes a bunch of different themes. Yeah, the main framework is Genesis. Yeah. What, what plugins do you guys see being needed to help push things uh, further up, up the development stack? And what's needed next in WordPress? What's what's missing from your perspective that, that you're going to build? Sure. Um, well, I, I think it's more just uh, you're you're right that it, you're, that was a very good uh, phrase. Uh, you know, bubbling up the development stack. Um, in that there are a lot of things that are slowly moving higher, and that they're easier and easier to integrate. Uh, custom taxonomies. <coughs> excuse me. Uh, for WordPress 2.8, I developed from scratch. You know, a custom te taxonomy integration and, and UI, and I was thrilled that you know in 2.9 it became less necessary. In 3.0, it's I think it's barely if at, if at all necessary. Um, I wrote one. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, there, there there are more plugins that need to do less, and I did some horrible hackery to get mine in. Um, so it's it's really there's nothing that I think that they need to develop from scratch. There's no big feature it's missing because they spend enough hours looking at it that it's that it's um that it's already there. Um, but it's really just a, a bubbling up where they're going to make things more you know easier to use and, and you know easier to do through the GUI and. It's not that they're not there at all already, it's that they're, they need to be integrated in a better, easier way. Um, question for question. <laughs> um, one of the things I was going to bring up is just given Google's push for speed and everybody's push for speed, one of the things I've noticed is that, <clears throat> at least on the sites I've worked with, the biggest speed inhibitors are the plugins because a lot of them are not built to be very. Well, they're not just built, they're just not built for speed. Um, so, I mean, is WordPress planning to put in things like metrics for webmasters and builders to be able to look at 
like you look at performance analysis of any piece of commercial code that you can look at it and say, oh, geez, you know, the tweetman plugin is five times slower than anything else on the page. What can we do about that? That's a very good point. Did you ever hear that? Should I repeat it? Yeah. Um, so yeah, basically, it was, it was the comment that you know Google is caring much more about speed, and speed is a very important factor. Um, and plugins are often, because they're written by individuals <clears throat> and not necessarily optimized for speed, are some of the, the worst performing things on a site. Um, so I, I don't know of anything that WordPress is necessarily working on. Um, there is a WP plugin cache. I'm sorry? There is a WordPress WordPress plugin cache. Oh, I see. Apparently, there is a WordPress plugin cache for um, for widgets. For for widgets specifically, so that's things that uh, strictly abide by the the WordPress architecture for widgets, which a lot of older plugins don't because it wasn't as powerful as it is now. Um, it wouldn't be hard for them to do at all, given um, given what I know about the WordPress architecture. It seems like it would be pretty straightforward, and it certainly would. Just just having the metrics exposed. I drive the entire plugin universe to write faster plugins. I, I, I don't disagree with you at all. I think that's a very good point. The problem is, um, you know, there are some things that the average user doesn't want to have to think about. Um, you know, a Steve, jo Steve Jobs said, you know, if you, if you have to have a, a task manager for, for your phone, you've already lost. Um, and it's, it's a similar thing. I can see there being, you know, for example, a, a speed rating on the, on the WP plugin website, on the, the plugins website. Um, just so you can get an idea, and I feel like that should be factored into ratings. I don't know if real-time monitoring of it, uh, while it's definitely possible, is necessarily the best idea. Uh, most of it's just trying not to throw too much information at people, while still giving the power users what they want. It would be my humble opinion that that is not something WordPress is going to get involved in. Just because the every one of you has a different WordPress installation with different needs, different content, different plugins. Um, so my recommendation are, th are three. One is, if you don't already use Firefox, use Firefox and install the Y Slow plugin. And that'll give you a lot of information about your page load and what's happening, what's not happening, including specific recommendations, as well as links out to full paragraphs explaining to you what they're talking about. And why Slow is in W-H-Y? No, Y is in Yahoo. Y is in Yahoo, gotcha. so just Y-S-L-O-W. Gotcha. Yes. Um, I've been hearing that uh, the government, the U.S. government, is going to start focusing more on um, ADA compliance for uh, websites. Can I ask you to hold that question? Because I have three points, and that was only my first one. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Rich. Um, the second one is, is to work with whoever you need to to get compression on your server, so gzip or zlive something like that, which, which compresses the data that goes from your server to the browser, and it makes it happen that much faster. And on a very fundamental level, look at the size of your photos, because typically that's where people fall down the most. You take a beautiful photo across to Boston, you download the two megabyte file out of your camera, and you upload it up to your blog, and you put 12 photos on a page, and you've got 25 megabyte page uploading to the guy's browser, so you're, you're killing yourself right there. So those are the three things. Why slow compression? And just look at your photos and make sure that you're not only cropping the size of the image, but also reducing the file size. Um, another thing is, uh, there's a lot of plugins add like a lot of things to like the header, like they, they, a lot of new plugins use jQuery or something like that, and like they all individually add their own header uh, like requests and all this, all this other stuff to the headers, and the more stuff that's added to the header, the slower the page is going to be. So, um, I, I'd recommend using uh, there's a plugin called WP Optimize that uh, it adds like a dashboard widget that tells you how um, how much um, I forget what it is. It, it, it basically tells you how how much um, your your sites and plugins and everything is using for uh, the memory and everything. And it's a good a good plugin to have. Um, touching on why slow, um, it is a very valuable tool. It will give you some good information on your load time, but um, and this is not true of all plugins. It doesn't really, unless you get into the nitty gritty of, of the the dashboard that they give you, uh, it doesn't really consider the actual just flat out load time of the page. Uh, so things like being on a faster host. If you're using one and one for your hosting. Uh, 
growth. Yes, but it, but the but the rating uh, it doesn't give you specific things to improve the load speed beyond uh, over the type things. So, for example, if your server itself is serving up pages slowly, if you're you know on a, a poor quality web host, um, things like that. So there are there are it does give you things that you should absolutely take into consideration. Um, but there are things beyond that. You know, if you're paying ninety nine cents a month for your hosting, uh, what you what you pay for is what you get. Absolutely. If you're paying ninety nine cents for a month for your web hosting, you are getting ninety nine cents speeds. Um, I don't care if they say they give you unlimited bandwidth. It's it's unlimited in volume, not by speed. I mean, it, it's not, it's finding the right it's finding the right host. Um, Ten dollars a month is is a good number. Just pulling it out off the top of my head. Because of GoDaddy is out of question. Yes. 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 GoDaddy is. Yes. If if you want to look at girls dancing around in, in tank tops, absolutely go to GoDaddy. If you want them to host your websites, go somewhere else. Um, Where'd you go? What? So uh, you, you said HostGator. HostGator is a good one. Um, if if your site is big and it's serving, you know, ten thousand people a month or something like that, uh, you might want to just upgrade from shared hosting and get something a little more dedicated. Um, Rackspace Cloud is a good one. Um, Media Temple is another good one. Um, do not Google do not Google web hosting reviews. Uh, you will get pages and pages of crap uh, because all, most web hosts give referral fees if someone links to you. So they're just going to link to the person who has the biggest referral fee and say they're amazing. Um, but yeah, you're, you're going to want to find an early friend and say who to use for hosting. Uh, and if there's, they say go daddy, find a good friend. <laughs> Wait, so you're saying no Google? <coughs> Don't Google for the best web host because it's so much oh, better. Yeah, right, right. No, I meant using Google as a host. As Google does. Yeah, they have that. They don't have to build your own website. Yeah, Google, I mean, Google Sites is not WordPress, so that's a different meetup. But. <laughs> 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 okay, one more thing. If, if you have a really active site, and you're running on MySQL or whatever database it is, it'd be a good thing to optimize the database once in a while. Because if you don't, the indexes that do the, that accelerate the database loads don't get updated. And there are, you know, if you don't do that over the course of let's say three, four, five months, you could see a doubling in performance just by optimizing the database. Is that still actually true? Yeah. 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 I fear MySQL is mature enough though. Huh. Could, you, could you repeat that? Uh, so there's I'm sorry. I'll, I'll paraphrase. So there's so basically, you know, the database backend that stores uh, your posts and whatnot. If you have a large number of posts over a large period of time, um, then there's some there's some optimizations that can be do that can be done through processing them and indexing them uh, intelligently. I believe there are plugins for WordPress that will give you a, a min panel option to optimize. Okay. Um, yeah. And and if not, then in whatever web post you're in, you just ask them the phrase. How do I optimize the tables in my database? And they'll give you like a three-step process. First, I feel like given given that you know posts that you know your main database entries are posts and comments, unless you have ten thousand comments, that's entirely negligible. Okay. Um, so I've actually seen that as well. It's just a good habits. Yeah, that's what you were saying. Um, anyway, I, I believe this gentleman had already said something. Uh, you were talking about EDA compliance. Yeah. So, what would be best practices for five hundred eight compliance uh, for accessibility? Are there themes you recommend or ways to use WordPress that are better? That's I haven't heard any of the. I'm sure there are, but I haven't heard or used any uh, APA compliant, you know, specific themes. Um, it, that's entirely up to the theme. Uh, that really has nothing to do with the very little to do with the WordPress inter interiors. They want to just one note on that. It's inconceivable that anyone in this room, unless they work for some major company, is going to be affected by government regulations. Of your website, they're not. If you've got a website with thirty thousand visitors a month, the government's not going to come in and say. In Europe, they might do that, but in the United States, it's not going to happen unless you're like. Or your clients. I was going to say, are you doing work for the government? Yeah, right. That's different issue. Or some of your user base is blind. Yeah. It's not just ADA compliance. There's actually a use for it. There are people that are blind, that are deaf, that really. Oh yeah, that's a different issue. Just a couple comments. GoDaddy is fantastic as a domain name registrar. I can't recommend them enough. Amazing technical support, 24 hour. Um, that's different than web hosting. So I, registering domain names, I think highly of them. I'm going to respectfully disagree. And it's, it's honestly, this is, a, there, this is this is a cult. This is you know a, a cult thing at this point. Um, you know, everyone has their host that they love, and everyone has their host that they hate. Um, GoDaddy is probably as good as anyone else for a registrar in 99% of cases, just because all you're doing is having them send one record to the the corp the, the the registrar and then you know do that once a year and you're done. Um, I've had bad experiences with their business practices, 
um, and you know their marketing schemes and their renewal policies and various other things. But really, that's outside the scope of this talk. So just be careful who you pick and you know get friends input. What are the ones you recommend, Rackspace? For hosting, for hosting, um, Rackspace um, Media Media Temple is a good one that I've had a lot of experience with. Um, what? Bluehost, Bluehost, uh, Gator, Host Gator, 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 and Host Monster. They'll all register domains with you. Personally, I like to have a, I, I like to use a different company to register my domain name than my host because if you have problems with your host and you want to switch, you don't want them owning your domain. Um, so I use personally Namecheap to register my domain names. Um, anyone else has a Namecheap? I use Fabulous. Fabulous. Um, really, I just like keeping them different. Hosting um, Dude, I think, is. It's cheaper than GoDaddy, although it's just a GoDaddy resale. It's called hosting dude. So seven, for, seven for, bucks for a domain name. Oh, for, for a domain name, you're going to pay between six twenty-five and ten dollars a month. Uh, ten dollars a year. I mean, the the two dollar difference doesn't really mean much. I would pick someone you're comfortable with over price. Um, Have you heard of the uh, WordPress specific uh, web hosting? Calls Aimsley. All they do is host WordPress. Yeah, I, I have a I have a domain. I, I use Pagely on one of my websites, and um, they they recently just uh, upgraded to Firehost, so that they basically, if you're hosting with them, you're hosting on Firehost, which is a really high quality site. They have a lot of security and a lot of like a lot of really good useful tools and stuff. So um, I, I I couldn't really say enough about uh, hosting with them. I mean, it, it, they, the support's really good and. It's, they're really helpful and everything, and it's really simple if you just want to like run your own site. You don't want to like get involved in the back end and everything, and, and the coding and everything. So they do it all for you. Who's that? Who's that? Pagely. Just going off hosting, I use the um, the Rackspace cloud. I know if you're hosting a gigantic blog, which does not apply to most of us in this room, um, they do have a blog post on how you can efficiently set up caching and. Um, load balancing and all sorts of stuff to integrate with their cloud platform, but that's more for businesses and the enterprise level. Okay, let's do that. Uh, yeah, I think you're trying to answer the question. I was going to say up on the uh, posts that you guys mentioned, which one can actually um, support the cloud computing. I was like Rackspace Cloud. Oh, Rackspace Cloud, I know they have posts. I don't use it personally because I have no need for the balancing, but they do have a way to set it up. Great. First part of the question. The second is now that we're talking about you know uh, cloud and the topic of cloud is WordPress because I'm very new to WordPress. I'm actually back here. I'm not about it, but does it support? Does it um, have hooks to like you know the future of cloud computing? I run it. And, uh, can you can you repeat the question? Sure. His question was: Does WordPress support hooks for cloud computing? And um, I'm going to say. Nothing specific off the top of my head. I do run it off the Rackspace cloud, and it runs normally as a normal web host. So the the cloud cloud computing technologies are it's a different layer of things uh, compared to uh, WordPress hosting. If you're at the point where you need to take advantage of cloud computing, um, you're looking at things like distributed uh, databases, um, you know, a load balanced hosting. That's not really conducive to the architecture of WordPress. Um, it's a buzzword, and everyone wants to be involved in it. But at that at that point, I don't really think it's I, I don't think it's really something that you need to consider until you are a very very large host. You should be able to throw WordPress with the proper caching on one large powerful server. And I know that doesn't have the failover, and that's a horrible thing to say in terms of you know reliability. But so be it. And so on. Yes. Uh, there was a mention uh, a little earlier about uh, e-commerce, and I've got uh, several sites that I run, um, and two of which I use WP e-commerce, and I find that it just runs very, very slow. And I'm wondering if, if that's just my experience, the way that I've set it up. I, I don't. I think I have about 100 products on it, which is not enormous, but it's uh, incredibly slow. And I'm wondering if anybody has had really good experience with either that product or some other. Uh, shopping cart where you can really customize the look and feel. I use uh, CS cart. It's really good. CS cart. CS cart. CS cart. CS cart. It's really cart. good. I like uh, Foxy cart. I believe someone else said. Um, I'll give going back to to the spiel on um, on 
things that WordPress isn't necessarily meant for. Um, an e-commerce website is distinctly one of them. Um, the problem that you have with, with most e-commerce systems is that while they are, is that when you think about it, every shopping cart system needs, every shopping cart website, every e-commerce website is very different. Um, you know, there's some that need to have options so you can pick the size of your t-shirt. There are some that have customized items and things like that. Uh, there are some oriented towards ordering one item and some are oriented towards ordering 100 items at a time um, with bulk discounts. So any any shopping cart system you're gonna have is, in order to support a lot of people, it's going to have to have a lot of features which correlates directly to slowdowns. Um, throw in whatever WordPress has on top of it and the slowdowns associated with that, and I think you're you're gonna have you're gonna have some issues. Uh, I'm not saying you know WordPress isn't doesn't make a good e-commerce website. Um, I'm saying it, it's not conducive to it and it requires quite a bit of fudgery to, to get it there. Conventional wisdom is that if you're doing an e-commerce site, you probably want Joomla or approval. I mean, I'm curious what the panel would, would react to that. I was just gonna say, if I were doing a solely specific e-commerce site, I'd use a dedicated e-commerce platform, and then just have, you know, if you wanted a blog, just set up your e-commerce. I've used in the past KubeCart, and then just poking around, I know there's Shopify, Adobe makes one. I mean, you just find something you're comfortable with and you like the interface of it, and you can customize it to your needs, set it up on your domain, and then just create a separate directory, you know, blog.example.com, and that's where you have your WordPress blog to blog, and then all your e-commerce stuff is handled by a separate application. And if you like WordPress and the open source, then you should probably look at Magento. Yes. That's the equivalent for the e-commerce side, and it integrates well. So look at Magento. And how, how does it relate to WordPress? Pardon? How, how does, is Magento separate from WordPress? Yes, it's an independent company. Okay. Even CSCart is independent. It has uh, its own um, SEO. Everything you can customize it. CS cart. CS cart. Yeah. What was the question? Uh, no, I'm just uh, giving an example of uh, its own customization, and they can have you, its own CSC board and everything. Okay, great. Do you know if uh, WordPress is abandoned BB press, or is there another form plugin compatible with that? BB code. I know BB Press is what they're working on, but they hadn't been anything done for quite a while. Then they said they were ramping up again this year. Yeah. Yeah, I don't remember. You know, I don't know the answer. A bunch of others, but is there a simple plug-in? I think it's still out there. We used yeah. it on a site for yeah. USC. I don't think a lot of work's been done to it, personally. I know it, if you set it up, it will work. It's just very lacking in things to do. Yeah, one of the and the here it's unstable. And then they said they were getting back into it. And I didn't know if this was going to be consistent with the new release of the line. I'm not sure. So that, that's all dynamic content, too, right? Um, yeah, so BB Press, yeah, it's all dynamic content. Um, that's another situation where unless you, you find strong benefit from the integration of your commenting system with your form, um, if you have a very form and community-oriented thing, um, you might be better off setting up a separate form. Um, That'll be behind the login anyway, right? So if you think of dynamic content, you know, from search engines, that's a different story. Uh, so that wouldn't count as... No, it's... it's, it's you can make it readable. Yeah, but um, if, if he chooses to have a private forum, a membership forum... Yeah, but it could be a public forum. It could very easily be... You yes. should take a look at Bodycrest. That, that has forums and it has, uh, like, a whole bunch of other different features. The whole bunch of social networking. Uh, okay. It doesn't have to be the same. Oh, yeah. Oh, maybe I'll have to turn some of that off. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that woman over there has a question. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I, I have a question that I don't know if it's a CNS question or a design question. Okay. So I want to build a page that has, or site that has on the, on the front page, the, the visual look is about 60% is the blog and about 40% are the comments. In other words, which I almost never see on sites where you either have almost all the, the organization doing the blog and, and then the comments are at the bottom, or it's all, it's all user comments like slash dot or whatever. What I'm trying to do is put those two together, like a 60-40 kind of visual split. With the, That's the one part of the challenge. The other part of the challenge is I find that people, even with tagging and categorizing, have trouble finding the content about what they want. If I'm doing a site about content management systems and I have one part about Drupal and one part about WordPress, when I'm, when I'm calling up WordPress, I want everything about WordPress to come up there in the thing. Is that a 
Is that a CMS issue? Is that a taxonomy issue? So the first one is very is very definitely a, a theming issue. Um, you know, a what issue? A theming Sorry. issue, a design yeah. issue. Oh, um, okay. You know, the WordPress supports it. You know, you stick you know the comments anywhere, and then you have all your comments. Um, so it's really just getting an appropriate theme that that emphasizes them the way you'd like. Um, in terms of the the searchability, um, tagging personally tagging in a lot of ways isn't a searching solution. It's very distinct from a searching uh, a searching uh, question. Um, I don't know where uh, WordPress's search has come as of late, um, but it, it definitely could it could probably always use some work. Um, you know, Google Custom Search is a good middle ground there. Um, so you, I believe there's a plugin that will do it that will replace your search with Google Custom Search, which basically oh, okay. allows mm -hmm. Google to search your site um, and say just restrict it to within your website. Um, just be forewarned, they can only search the pages that they have indexed. Yes, but if, if you link to it, if there is a way to get to it through linking, uh, which in WordPress defaultly there will be for every page, where uh, Google will have indexed it. Thank you. The woman over there. Uh, I have a client who wants uh, to have a login feature on their web on the web pages that I and I built this site in WordPress, and uh, I did have one plugin that I used on one site, but it's not working, uh, and I don't have 3.0. Obviously, I have 2.9 something, and it's not working now. So, can anybody recommend a plugin that works for creating login? What do you mean by creating a login page? You mean just a page? Well, having a feature that you can't get to certain pages. Um, for one person or for membership? Is it paid? From from membership, it's not paid. Oh. No. So it's similar. I, I think I think if I'm not mistaken, similar how you can password protect a post, say you must be logged in to view this post. Is that correct? Yeah, but just for all of the, the pages and as well as well pages page. and posts. Yeah. So kind of like an extranet on a traditional website. Yeah. Like client login. I suppose. Yeah. I mean, um, when you go to the home page, the login is there, and you can't see any of the other pages unless you log in. Yeah. Um, I've never heard of one. Has anyone? I know there's a plugin, but I'm sorry I couldn't yeah. tell you the name of it. I assure you one exists. Um, I would take to Google. Uh, they tend to know a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> if, anyone, if, if anyone has, has heard of such a plugin. Can you see my login? 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 But that doesn't really necessarily put the pages themselves it, it behind. Has lot of, it has a lot of customization now. Okay. Okay. So you might want to look into theme. I don't know if it, I don't know if it does that exactly. I know that it's the it's the number one login thing. Say the name again. Theme my login. You can you can customize where like what people like what what your users have access to and. And I, I, I haven't used it in a while, but I know that it's been updated a bunch of times. I still have it like on my dashboard. I just don't ever use it. I always update it though. So. Look, look into it, see if it has the yeah. feature you want. And Otherwise, that, I know that's like the number one login plugin. Carol, did you have a question? Yeah, kind of. Um, you guys touched on some. Yeah, speak up loud. Sorry. Yeah, I know you guys touched upon some SEO aspects of, of WordPress as a long website thing or just as a blog, could you maybe summarize and say what there are the five top things you would do for SEO reasons? Uh, is the is the SEO plugin listed on this list here? Oh, besides the plugins, yeah, I see the... No, no, it's install the plugin and then install it again. Um, really, <laughs> really, really, you know, so SEO is, is a dark art, you know, like I said, you know, my company is, does a disgustingly large amount of SEO and still a lot of it is a wild west. Um, there's, there, it's, it, it is, it involves you know cross, crossing your fingers, sacrificing a goat to the Google gods. Like it's <laughs> so install. You know there are some basic practices, but if you install one of the the better SEO SEO plugins, they'll take care of all of them for you. Um, you know changing the you know the other things are you know new new fresh content. Um, you know uh, having an XML sitemap uh, supposedly helps, and then also um, if you get an email, you will get these emails if you have a website with a contact us form. Uh, if you if you get an email promising to get you the first page of Google, stay away from them. Um, Google tends to figure out what sites are selling links to try and you know basically create this artificial inflation. Um, they will penalize you heavily for it, and not just in the temporary way. In the you're now screwed for life, and your domain is basically on this you know no fly list. Um, so, so don't try it. You know, 
there's there's a difference between uh, purchasing backlinks through uh, you know an e a, a, a chamber of commerce website if your content is <coughs> uh, it's all about relevance. Um, the biggest thing that Google cares about is uh, other sites linking to you. Um, so I don't know if anyone knows how PageRank works. I won't go into detail, but basically every time another site links to you, it's kind of like that site voting for you. And based on how much page rank that site has, they, they kind of give you they give you some of their page rank. Um, so you know if, if a, a small website links to you, then you know you get a little bit of page rank. If a big website links to you, especially with what with relevant keywords in their link, um, then you get you get a lot of page rank off of that. So the biggest thing is just be well known and have people link to you, and that's going to do amazing things. Simply changing the default page title from a number to the title of the post significantly helps. Yeah. Because yeah. that appears in the search engine. Yeah. As opposed to a stupid little number that they get by the Besides the the plug in you said that that not address you know, not more so than the other websites. Yes. Yeah, what he just WordPress said is pretty strong out of the box, frankly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But what he just yeah. said makes a huge difference because you make that design choice at the beginning. And it means that every file that you create, every blog post that you create, gets either a number or Which a set of words separated by hyphens. Right. And if it's a set of words separated by hyphens, Google reads those words. So you've got to make that decision right in the beginning. Otherwise, you get you lose a lot. Sure, let's call it a hyphen. When I create my the link, it's going to be for a pager post. I think what is the search term people going to search on? If I want that search term to be in, so they're searching for black Ferraris with green tops, then that's what will, the five words will be in the link. Um, what I recommend people do is just prepare a cheat sheet. Uh, in other words, you read various SEO books, prepare a little checklist for you know H1 tags, your titles, your meta tags, and so on. And because it's very easy as you're adding new stuff to forget about that. And then for, for that checklist, for every page, just go down, have I done this, have I done that? If, if you don't know what an H1 tag and a meta tag is, just install the plugin, it'll do it for you. <laughs> Again, you know, that's the kind of thing, once you get into the deeper, deeper Google SEO stuff, you need to be coding anyway. So, um, and what plugin would you recommend for the SEO? I've never used any of them, to be honest with you. All in one SEO. All in one SEO, apparently, and that's a WordPress plugin. Yeah, sure, it says Google SEO on it. Yeah, and, and on, on the handout, that's, um, the plugins are listed, um, uh, 12. 12 page number 12 favorite yeah. plugins and then that's all in one SEO is the second one yeah. if there's uh, Jim and I have actually had a debate about since I'm using thesis a lot how much of thesis replaces all these SEO plugins so they conflict if you use thesis you should not install all in one SEO really okay well, good that's useful to know okay you what? What is they, take care of it all? thesis and all in one SEO try to modify the same thing basically and that ends poorly Better. They're double they're, they're different. Thesis gives you a lot more features uh, if you need them. Just to clarify, Thesis is a theme. All in one SEO is a plugin. So you can't do both. No. It, How did this there, yeah. Yeah. You mentioned Atawapa, and I know that it was highly touted at a previous WordPress meetup. Uh, but some of us fell off our chairs in the back of the room and we learned it was tables-based, which is technology from 1990 for displaying data rather than being, you know, a platform to build on. <laughs> so, the theme called Atawalpa. Do people know what, what uh, CSS versus table means or is, is that what's going into? No. no. Okay, fine. Okay. <laughs> well, you know, I, I want to go back to your question. Um, early in the, in the meeting, the question was raised, what do we think should be coming up soon to sort of help, you know, what would, would WordPress be coming up with? What new plugins are needed to make WordPress really work? And, and my answer isn't about any plugins. I, I think there's a big misconception, um, because I'm guessing everybody in this room thinks that they should be able to do whatever they can dream up with by themselves in WordPress. And I think that's the biggest issue WordPress has right now. I think there's a big misconception that uh, the everyday business owner should be able to get in and customize their WordPress website or blog, fine tune it for speed, fine tune it for SEO, and do all this work. And you know, being in that business, I see that frustration over and over and over and over. 
So there, there needs to be a little bit more uh, understanding that this is a, it's a technical operation, and if you don't understand how it's working, you're going to cause yourself some trouble and some aggravation. Uh, and just sort of put the shoe on the other foot if somebody came and said they were going to just do your profession themselves. It just doesn't make sense. So I think that's one area that I would uh, bring up. Uh, Jim, piggybacking off of that, um, could you talk about then the, the flow, like a best practice flow when you're considering, say, you started from scratch, what would, what would the process be? Because that is transparent to any plugin or anything. So what would you say would be that flow when you're starting out? What would you do first, second, third, for the site? Yes. Like starting from scratch, what would you do? There's a lot of things to consider. There's SEO, there's speed, there's social media implementation, there's content, all this other stuff. So, just kind of like a best practice flow, starting from scratch. I just, <laughs> just, <laughs> just, I know there's a lot, there's 10,000 things, but what would be like the top three or top five things just that you do in almost every project? Personally, <laughs> personally, um, once I'm wondering, is this, I mean, this is a pretty complicated topic. Um, yeah. we, uh, we'll give it a try. Yeah. 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 If you're starting a site in your business, um, first thing to do is if you don't find a theme you like and you want one, you have to, you just got to pay someone to make it or attempt to make it yourself. Um, once you have the theme, setting everything up is cake. Um, once your theme's down, the person has it the way you like, you literally go in, add pages, blog posts, you can put in a Twitter plugin, do the SEO plugin. It's the hardest part, I think, for people is finding a theme they like and having someone show them how to use it. So, your your question is about someone comes to you and says, "I want you to build me a website." Where do you start? Is that what your question general, is? The kind of general best practice. Well, for me, the the first thing is if you're the customer, I want to know who your customers are what you're offering them, what they like about you, what they don't like about you, what you're gonna be doing in three years with your business, what's working, what's not working, and find out what's important to your customers. Because when someone comes to your website, you have a very limited amount of time to provide the answer that they're looking for to solve the problem that they have. That's why they're coming to your website. So organizing your content, and you mentioned architecture, that's really important. And so many sites just get built because you know here's a home page about us page, contact us page, and we're done. And, you know the, the owner writes the copy and it just it doesn't fly so I would organize that I would do the SEO work early on so you have a good idea of what keywords are really being used by people looking for the services that you provide and we only do custom themes our clients don't want to look like somebody else so you have to have an idea about color and what color communicates spacing, the position, you know, the top part is most important. What do you, what's the desired outcome? When someone hits the home page, what do you want them to do? Do you want them to call you, fax you, send smoke signals, drive to your location? Have all those priorities in order. And also have an idea of the, the persona, not only of the person that's coming to the site, but also what kind of a persona do you want to have representing you on the web? You know, so are you professional and uptight? Or are you, you know, childish, so you want to have you know, yellow and purple and green. All those things have to be all lined up. The technical part is, is really, for the people that do it day in, day out, that's the easy part. That's the part that's pretty routine. Uh, there, the, another phase is figuring out what features need to be on the site. Okay, do you need a blog? Do you need a forum? Do you need a photo gallery? On and on and on through that list of what's important. And, and, and you know, I could stand here for half an hour, so I'll stop. Hand in the corner. Is there a plug-in for that? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, party, party words. Um, okay. Um, to to kind of add on to what you're saying, because I'm in, from the marketing side of things, um, it, achieving it is kind of, it, all the, the process has to be the same for a regular website that it is for um, a WordPress. You just have to use a different software or a different approach. Um, and sometimes people like to use WordPress because it's a little easier to accommodate beginners and people who are kind of entrepreneurial and want to do it themselves. But as Jim pointed out, yeah, we are the plug-in. <laughs> um, yeah. hey. we we're the ones who bring it all together and say, oh, so you, what you're saying is you need this, this, and this. A, a blog is not, a blog is a solution. A blog is not, a, you know, 
a website. A, you know, if someone comes to me and says, I would like you to, to set a blog, I, I would like a blog. No, you would like a place where you can post about your life or your, your kittens or your, you know, or technology or you want to, to sell your book more. Um, you know, there's, there's an underlying source of your desire to have a blog that is really what you're asking for. Um, you know, asking for a blog is like asking for a cloud computing. Um, if, you, if you don't necessarily know what it is, you could very well be asking for the wrong thing. I don't know to pick on you. Um, you know, so, so it's, it's important that you think about what you actually want and what the underlying <laughs> goal is, and you need to be open for the idea that maybe a blog is not it. Um, and also, just to touch on, you know, you're, you're asking for best practices. If you don't, you know, install Google's SEO plugin from the get-go, you know, it's not like you're never going to get on Google. Um, this is all stuff you can go back and fix in the future. Um, it's, it's not, you know, with, with very few exceptions, the, this stuff. For SEO, if you're just starting out, if you have, you know, 10 people looking at your site, it really doesn't matter uh, how many people, you know, you're competing with people with huge budgets and tons of money. Um, if by the time you have, if, if you start to have a lot of posts, you can pay for an SEO consultant to come in and you know look through your website and make these recommendations. So don't don't worry about just you know getting everything perfect when you launch. Just get something out there. Start writing good content that people are going to want to see, and the rest will come naturally. It, just one thing about fixing stuff: you don't want to do black art. Don't black art is here. If that you can't fix, you will be penalized. You will be penalized for lives your kids, your grandkids. Um, Google takes this stuff very seriously. Black black hat meaning paying for links to your website. That's well, there's a lot of, of things like, amongst other things. There's a whole set of, of, of what's called black art in SEO that you do not want to do. There's this whole right. books on it. But, but <laughs> sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But when it works, it's like a one week wonder, and then you're like gone for it. Last question, sorry. Uh, it was basically a WordPress isn't really something that not an answer for everybody. You know, it's, it's not just a CMS, it's a CMS based on a blog. It's not necessarily just a CMS to create a website for anything. I mean, you have to find the thing that fits your solution the best. Yeah. All right. Sorry guys, it could be a buzzkill here, but we are at the end. Um, we need to be out of here by 9 o'clock, so to let the generous people here go home. Um, real quick, thanks for coming out. I um, hope you enjoyed it. Can we have a round of applause for you? So, I, yeah, like I mentioned, I wanted to keep this going. Um, if we bring in big crowds and lots of good content discussion, we will hopefully get into bigger rooms and uh, fancy treatment. So let's keep, keep it up. Yeah. Um, thanks for coming out again. This is what we try to do with the panel. And um, please let us know what, what we can do better and what you liked. And I know that we have 400 people. Whenever we send out a meetup um, announcement, it's really hard to please. Like we're upsetting some people and pleasing other people. So if you have suggestions about you want to see more code or this was too technical or not beginner friendly enough or whatever, please send feedback and uh, hope you enjoy.